You are listening to The Dollop on the All Things Comedy Network. Uh, this is an American History podcast. Each week, I, Dave Anthony, read a story from American history to my nemesis. Gareth Reynolds, who's not your nemesis and also has no idea what the topic is going to be about. This is part two of Ronald Reagan with Patton Oswalt. Also, and called it, quote, his jam pad. Jam pad? I'm the fucking hippo guy! Dave, okay. My name's Gary. <laughs> My name's Gary. Wait. Is it for fun? And this is not going to become the Tiggly Podcast. Okay. This is like anarchy! On a five-part coefficient. <laughs> My room's a Now hit him with the puppy. You both present sick arguments. <laughs> no sleep tell hippo! No sleep tell hippo! Uh, action part. Hi, Gary. No. Nicely <laughs> done, my friend. No. No. <laughs> Rhoda. Rhoda in the court. I uh, loved how I was trying to throw a joke in there, <laughs> but what it, it is is you go with Pat and I was like, no, I just go also, and then the theme starts, which is it's pretty perfect. Sounds like a Make a Wish kid. <laughs> also, yay! <laughs> All right, that's the end of the talk about that. <laughs> uh, we're gonna be in uh, Wisconsin. We'll be in uh, uh, Madison on October 18th. We'll be in Milwaukee on October 20th, and then uh, we go to uh, Europe in November. We'll be in. Uh, uh, All over England, Oslo, yeah. Stockholm, Copenhagen. Amsterdam, Copenhagen, Damn, Amsterdam. Copenhagen. I think Copenhagen sold that too. Um, uh, that will Amsterdam, be in London, Manchester, Glasgow, Cardiff, uh, Birmingham. Cardiff, Birmingham, and then know. Dublin. Yeah. And Where? To, in, what's the venue in Dublin? The, the, I don't know. The, oh, Victor Street. No, it's not um, Bigger Street. No, I don't know. It's not Bigger Street. Dublin's uh, such a great city. Yeah. And then uh, go to dollopodcast.com, and you, you can see all the tour dates. And then if you want to watch the dynamic broadcast feed <laughs> of this episode, you can go to the All Things Combi YouTube page. Okay, so <clears throat> where we last left off, 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 uh, was uh, Ronald Reagan at the end of 1981. His approval rating is at 49%. We're in the middle of the cheese sis. The cheese crisis. We're right after the cheese crisis. To kick off 1982, the White House announced that Ronald would grant tax-exempt status to Bob Jones University and other schools that racially discriminated. It's a fun start to part two right <laughs> off the there bat, go. right? Good to be back. Yeah. And we're back. Great. <laughs> All righty. Proud to be <laughs> <Yeah. in the laughs> A week later, Ronald phoned the Washington Post to say he didn't know there was a legal case pending about segregated schools. How is this possible? <laughs> and then CBS <laughs> dug up a memo in which intervention was requested in the Bob Hope, in the Bob Jones case by Bob <laughs> Jones University. In the memo, Ronald wrote, quote, I think we should. <laughs> I mean. There you go. Early 80s, folks. <laughs> I didn't know anything about it. Did you write this on it, though? Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Come here, lassie. Brain is already applesauce. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> it really is. Sim- it is <laughs> when he sits down. You just hear yeah. a gentle slosh. It's a slurpy cup full of applesauce. That was his brain. Can I put some? <laughs> can I put some cinnamon in my ear? <laughs> can I eat myself, mommy? Uh, oh, so the God. tax cuts that he'd asked for were backfiring. An official recession was declared in 1982. Unemployment went up to 10.8%. Jesus. At a press conference, Ronald said, quote, there are a million more people working than there were in 1980. That was a lie. There were actually 100,000 less working. (laughs) What? (laughs) Ronald also kept telling reporters such a big help wanted sections in the Sunday newspaper meant unemployed people must be lazy and would rather not work. (sighs) I mean... What so kind of ads. metric wow. do you think that is? <laughs> yeah. like, look, at, look at the ads. Yeah. Look, lazy buggers. <laughs> <laughs> no one will clean up the shit tub from yeah. Spencer's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he still wanted more tax cuts. The Democratic controlled Congress wanted to raise taxes. Ronald went on TV and told Americans uh. again to call Congress and ask for tax cuts. And this time, Americans did not. Good. No. Ronald finally was forced to raise taxes. The Tax and Fiscal Responsibility Act of 1982 passed $98 billion in new taxes. He would raise taxes 10 more times over his presidency. The White House began funding the Mujahideen in Afghanistan who were fighting the Soviets. 
This included a young upstart fella named Osama bin Laden. Hmm. Hmm. That's the last we'll hear of this character. <laughs> <laughs> Good God. By the way, the Mujahideen uh, were the heroes of Rambo 3. That's who he fights. That's, that's right. actually right. So he works yeah. with to yeah. defeat the Russians. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So great. Yeah, I mean, it is amazing. There you go. Yeah. It's Stallone. <laughs> hey, I, won. I know what I'm going to do. Hey, thank you, Osama. <laughs> Yo. Yo, Bin Laden. Thanks a lot. On his trailer door. Yeah. We're shooting. <laughs> <laughs> Ronald said he got a letter from the Pope about U.S. sanctions against the Soviet Union. He likes letters. Mm-hmm. Loves those letters. Oh, yeah. A Pope yeah. letter's got to I mean, he's got to be, on. like, clapping his little hands Wee. in front of himself. So, yay. <laughs> and uh, the Pope said, he said, quote, the Pope approves of what we've done so far. The Pope never said that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. A month later, Ronald made up for it by falling asleep in a meeting with the Pope at the Vatican. <laughs> oh, my God. What? There you go. I mean. There that's... you go. Take that, Jesus. <laughs> that's... How about you send a better opener next time? <laughs> uh. <laughs> do you wake him? What do you well, do? Yeah, what do you do if well, the president like, falls you... asleep in yeah, front of you? What do you do? What's the move? He woke himself because his head fell down. Oh, oh he, like, okay. he snapped up. Snapped so up. he did like what? Like middle... Passengers yeah. do on planes That's all the right. time. They're like, <laughs> ah, my neck. Ah, my neck. <laughs> last which year. just, which just makes it more obvious you were asleep. Apple yeah, exactly. sauce comes out of his eye <laughs> a little. Hey! Big hat. Oh, there's a little <laughs> bit of apple sauce on the wall. And don't worry, Mr. President. Uh, Ronald was a master of saying the wrong things. At a press conference, Ronald said missiles, quote, carried in ships or submersibles can be recalled if there has been a miscalculation. <laughs> what? Nope. Lassie, come here, girl. Come back to the <laughs> ship, Lassie. Come back. Yeah. No one in the press questioned him for saying missiles fired from planes and submarines could be recalled after being fired. Well, they just it, let him say it. Because they because half those half those assholes just want access. Right. They totally. want to be on TV, totally. seeing the press corps, and they don't want to be the guy that's like, hey, no, they can't, and the next day their their press pass is gone. <laughs> well, especially yeah, exactly. Especially now, because now it's like they're really it. I mean, you could just completely remove some I mean there's not a press secretary. Yeah, anymore. exactly. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, no one. In nineteen eighty two, the C D C began calling the mysterious disease affecting mostly gay men acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, or AIDS. The total number of cases reported was 771, a total of deaths 618. Ronald had not said a thing about it. Reporter Lester Kingsolving asked Press Secretary Larry Speaks, uh, that, that's, by the way, the, the Press Secretary for Speaks. The, almost the entire time his name is Speaks. <laughs> Fantastic. Sure. Larry Speaks. Perfect. His name is a sentence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's also a children's <laughs> book. Yeah. Larry Speaks. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm Larry. <laughs> God damn. That's all right. That, again, there's so many. Let's let's leave it alone. It's right there. Now, Lester was a super right wing guy, and he called gay rights organizations, quote, the sodomy lobby. And yet he was worried about AIDS. <laughs> well, you can see why. This right, guy yeah. is also Lester. Does the president have any reaction to the announcement by the Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta that AIDS is now an epidemic in over 600 cases? Over a third of them have died. It's known as gay plague. The press pool breaks into laughter what no it is it's a pretty serious thing one in every three people that gets it have died and i wonder if the president was aware of this larry larry i don't have it press pool laughs do you lester you don't have it well i'm relieved to hear that larry the press pool laughs do you no i don't you didn't answer my question how do you know the press pool laughs? What is going on? Does the president, in other words, the White House, look on this as a great joke? Larry, no. I don't know anything about it, Lester. What is going on? Why? I, I don't understand. Why are they all laughing? Is it just the absurdity or just the fact that it's even being they brought up? They don't care that people yeah. are dying. And also back then, there was there was still that thing of like, Oh, you care about gay people? Right. What are you gay? Right, right. Like, and that's literally what Larry was doing. Right. Oh, what are you? I don't have it. What are you? Yeah, right. What are you and gay? Like, oh, like, got him, just, Larry. Yeah, it's just right. like that that uh, I mean, high school bro thing. Right. The only guy who seems to care in the room is a crazy right wing guy who crazy. hates gay people, and yet he's like, "This is scary." See, yeah. 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 A few days later, Larry introduced Liberian leader Samuel K. Doe as Chairman Mo. <laughs> what? I mean, that's so <laughs> off. 
There you go. <laughs> Chairman Mo. <laughs> it doesn't what? work either way. Like, you couldn't even get it wrong to, with a person that exists. Yeah, like, Chairman Mo. There's there's like yeah. there's ways to be confused that yeah, are acceptable yeah, sometimes. But not, the... but not when you just quit. <laughs> President Mo. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, I'm done here. Yeah. <laughs> Doe had come to power in a brutal, bloody coup in which most of the leaders of the opposing party were executed on a beach. Doe suspended the Constitution and ran the country, committing atrocities. So Ronald had a nice meeting with him and gave sure. him tons of money. Right. There you go. Right. I think he was, the, he was the guy we gave the most money to in all of Africa wow. in the 80s. Wow, Christ. Uh, Squeaky wheel gets the grease. Yeah. Uh, am I right, people? Yeah. Yeah. Am I right, people, or am I right? <laughs> General Efren Rios Amont took control of Guatemala in a bloody coup in March and set up a military junta. Ronald's State Department praised Mont. But human rights workers, journalists, and the CIA said he was committing massacres against the Ixil indigenous, indigenous people. The U.S. Embassy was investigating the massacres when in December 1982, Ronald took a trip to Latin America to meet with General Mont. Afterwards, Ronald was asked about the massacres, and he said, quote, I'm inclined to believe they've been getting a bum rap. Oh, yeah. They really do. People seem yeah. to really do frown upon massacres. massacres. just do not get the respect. Yeah. That they like, it's not easy to do. It I think is. that's what yeah. people overlook. That it's just, it's not overnight. Right. He then called Mont, quote, a man of great personal integrity and commitment. Jesus. It, to massacring people. Right. Yeah. It helped that Mont was an evang yeah. evangelical Christian oh. <laughs> oh, who boy. was massacring. Oh, well, that's okay. Go. It was in the name of God. When he got back, when Ronald got back from Central America, he said, quote, well, I learned a lot. You'd be surprised. They are all individual countries. <laughs> oh, <Jesus laughs> what? Fucking Christ. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> As designated wow. on maps and globes. <laughs> <laughs> the president. So you're all different then. <laughs> wow. That's, that's like when George W. Bush did his first tour, and he, like, visited England, and, and, and he came back uh, and said, well, we... We, we met them and we stood our ground and it was like, well, those are our allies, <laughs> asshole. Like, you don't need to... <laughs> fucking idiot. Anyway. And he called the, the Greeks Grecians. Oh, fantastic. Uh, um, so uh, the Reagan administration then proposed renewing military aid to Mont. From the New York Times, quote, the day after Reagan's endorsement, Guatemalan soldiers arrived at a village called Dos Eres and started killing. The slaughter went on for three days, and by the time it was over, at least 162 people, including many children, were dead. The Guatemalan army, with Ronald's support, wiped out over 600 entire villages and killed every person in them. Military assistance was secretly resumed by the CIA, and under Ronald in the 80s, nearly 200,000 people were killed in Guatemala. Mott was eventually sentenced to 80 years in prison for genocide in 2013. Can, can I just, that's, but, all, that's all horrible, but 80 years for genocide? Yeah. Well, you're, but that's life. I yes, mean, he's, but can right. we just tack it on as life? <laughs> can we just call it life? Isn't that yeah. nicer? Jesus. <laughs> in 1983, there were 2,807 reported cases of AIDS. Total deaths, 2,118. Ronald had not said a word about wow. it. Surgeon General C. Everett Koop was not allowed to speak publicly about AIDS. Pat Buchanan wrote an op-ed in the New York Post, quote, oh, here we go. The poor homosexuals, they have declared war upon nature, and now nature is exacting an awful retribution. Uh, Pat had a regular job on CNN's Crossfire. Yeah. In the new year, an aide was quoted. The president and Cap sit around and talk about how workfare got surfers off the beach in California. They have no concept of what is going on. What? 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 The, what? So, <laughs> we're... So were surfers a problem that needed to, I didn't know oh, that. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Lo, the, the, the just loafing around <laughs> surfers. Dude, I said I'll go when I'm ready, dude. Back <laughs> off. Get out of here. Yeah, we've got to close the Gidget Gap. <laughs> all these, you know, you can get a Woody and uh, apparently uh, go on safari. It's very brutal what these surfers do. They don't know about it. Bomb them. Yeah. <laughs> Ronald told reporters about the Ten Commandments of Nikolai Lenin. What? One was, quote, promises are like pie crusts made to be broken. Wait, I mean, okay. <laughs> Dave, Dave, what, what is happening right now? Okay, what just happened? <laughs> what just happened? Oh, my I God. Mean, how? <laughs> uh, 
Soviet scholars explained there was no such thing as Lenin's Ten Commandments and, if and Vlad- that Lenin's first name was Vladimir. <laughs> <laughs> his Ten Commandments, he yeah. probably wouldn't analogize pie crust. I know, he wouldn't put pie crust on there. That's it. Holy shit. Fantastic. <laughs> Fucking go off, King. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my Lord. Yep. Uh, oh, my God. A few days later, as six reporters asked Ronald questions in the Oval Office, the rest of the press corps listened on a PA system. They constantly burst into laughter at his answers. A New York Times headline, quote, Reagan misstatements getting less attention. (sighs) Ronald's nominee to the Board for International Broadcasting admitted in his Senate hearing that he had many investments in South Africa, recently was a guest of the apartheid government, belonged to an all-white country club, and was director of a group that financed research on the genetic inferiority of blacks. Well, oh, God God damn it. I but, mean, come on. But, Don't tell me that this man... But he said, quote, I do not believe in my heart that I am a racist. Oh, my uh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. Imagine being I'm able little, to do that. By the way, he's racist in a way that other racists can't <laughs> yeah. hit. The, like, he, There's racists going, I'm not, wow, that's... <laughs> I don't fund science. Like, I'm racist, race. but I hate that guy's racism. Yeah. Like, my racism is like, I don't like black, and I just let it go at <laughs> yeah. that. I don't fund I, I, controlled experiments. I don't bring like, metrics into the argument. <laughs> wow. Holy shit. Uh, he withdrew as a nominee. I mean, oh, imagine, like. Come on, fight, as, little as guy. Soon as, probably as soon as he finished that sentence. And yeah. with that, I withdraw. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> James Watt, Secretary of the Interior, says to a reporter, quote, if you want an example of the failures of socialism, don't go to Russia, come to America and see the American Indian reservations. Well, how? The, I, the, the just, gall. It, <laughs> the wait, goddamn the gall. Insanity. I mean. Yeah. Like, how did no one hit him with a like, bat? Literally, you should be stabbed in the neck if you say that. So much should literally legally be able to be like, there you go. Yeah. That's the end of you. And you're done. Oh, my God. Wow. <sighs> I can't. I don't have a. I, <laughs> there must have been. You know what? I bet that. I bet that there were reporters that actually wanted to push back, but they were constantly being hit with things. It made them just kind of go. What? And then he just walked away. Right. I mean, they're like, no, no, come back, and he's gone. Yeah, like, that's that, that is a tactic. Holy stun. Shit. Yeah. Set, set your stun speech them. on stun. Uh, uh, what did you just say? <laughs> he left twenty bye minutes bye. ago. Yeah, he's gone. <laughs> A month later, Watt told lobbyists about his coal leasing commission. Mm-hmm. He's mm-hmm. talking to a group of lobbyists, and he says, quote, We have every kind of mix you can have. I have a black, I have a woman, two Jews, and a cripple, what, and what? we have talent. What? I got... And we've got talent <laughs> with the black and the cripple and two ladies and the Jew. Hey. And the Jew! Oh, I remember that. I remember that very uh, specifically when he he did that. Oh yeah, it was. Wow. And I was young, and I still re- like that was one of those. It was because he he de- and you can if you watch the video of it. He delivers it like he's he's landing the best joke. Yeah, and uh. this is gonna destroy the room, and the room is just what a horror. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. went on quite a while, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Americans do not react well to this. <laughs> Even Republicans call for his res- resignation. But Ronald defends him, quote, if I thought he was bigoted or prejudiced, he wouldn't be part of our administration. What? No, what? <laughs> <laughs> no he'd be running it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, wow. So Watt resigns 19 days later. He says, quote, the press tried to paint my hat black, but I had enough self-image to know the hat was white. He then assumes a crucifixion pose and photographers take pictures. What just happened? What do you, how do you, a, how do you, yes. what? God, oh man. Imagine being capable of this. And also, you've just been accused of racism. You think is try to make my hat black, what? but I mean, it's white. And what is he even saying? We know saying? white is good, right? I mean. I'm not a racist. <laughs> and boom. Yeah. <laughs> And Same arms up thing. and feet connected, boom. In October 1983, suicide bombers blew up buildings housing American and French service members in Beirut. 241 Americans and 58 French are killed. 
Two days later, Ronald invaded the Caribbean nation of Grenada. There we go. That's solved. The that- prime minister, Sir Gary. <laughs> Wait, for mm. real. Uh, look, we don't know. Wow. I don't even think people think that my name's Gary anymore. <laughs> I, I, I think your pause is ill-timed. I really do. It's not even a bit people are doing anymore. <laughs> At the time, Sir Gary was in the U.S. to address the U.N. on, quote, the UFO phenomenon. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Wait. man. So he's over there talking about UFO. By the way, your, your nation's being invaded. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I, I was talking about anal probes. Wait, what's going on? <laughs> Holy shit. What a shit. time. Imagine being in this country. Like, get back. Don't do this now. Gary wanted a global task force to look into UFOs, and while he was in the U.S., a military junta took over Granada. <laughs> what? Well, this guy is just amazing. I mean, uh, uh, so Reagan uh, sent seventy six hundred U.S. troops mm-hmm. who took back Granada. I uh, said it was to save the medical students, U.S. medical students. Oh, sure. Uh-huh. The U.N. condemned the invasion as a flagrant violation of international law, but Ronald said Cuba was about about to invade, which was a complete lie. Sure, yeah. sure, sure, sure. sure. Uh, an Israeli newspaper reported that during a meeting between Ronald and their prime minister, Ronald said he was an army photographer and had filmed the horrors of Nazi concentration camps what? as they were liberated. Mm-hmm. Ronald also said he had saved a copy of the film in case there was a question of how bad it was in the concentration camps. The Israeli PM was so moved, he told his cabinet, Ronald Reagan spent the entire war in Hollywood. Yeah. yeah. What is he... Is he... Yeah. Is that a genuine lie or is I, applesauce... Yeah, I think it's applesauce. It's applesauce. Yeah, 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 yeah. There, So he I, kind of conflates these, like... Roles he played. Right. Roles into he played, reality. But I, I read, and, so he didn't play a role in this, but I read a... a uh, a guy trying to break it down and it was basically that there was video going around of that and he like burned it into his memory and then as he gets Mystery older and doesn't right, know what's right, happening right, right, he right. starts it seems saying real. stuff yeah. right didn't he also refer to soldiers uniforms as costumes I don't know probably that, that I would, <laughs> like, like again on a film set like, well they're costumes look at that wardrobe yeah so I, I think even Jesse Jackson's like Costumes are what actors wear in a movie. Exactly. It's not, yeah. It's, so <laughs> it was all a blur. Ed Meese started taking hate, heat because he was making constant comments about poor people being lazy. People began to call him Ebenezer Scrooge. Okay. Oh, that'll that'll solve it. A hero. That'll show him. A hero. Yeah. In December 1983, Ed Meese told the National Press Club that Scrooge was misunderstood. What? Who is the, who has ever oh, had nice. Scrooge's back? It's a very clear. It's very clear what we should feel about Scrooge. Yeah, it's not acceptable behavior until the ghosts. Quote: If you really look at all the facts, he didn't exploit Bob Cratchit. (laughs) (laughs) Like it's a documentary he watched. Yeah, Bob Cratchit was paid ten shillings a week, which was a very good wage at the time. What is happening? Shit. Bob, in fact had good cause to be happy with the situation. He lived in a house, not a tenement. Uh, His wife didn't have to work. He was able to afford the traditional Christmas dinner of roast goose and plum pudding. So let's be fair to Scrooge. He had his faults, but he wasn't unfair to anyone. He's an economic hero of mine, honestly. Uh, Trickle up economics. God. Just like cartoony, Uh, openly monstrous ghouls. But like (laughs) just running amok. And everyone going, okay, well, that's his opinion. I guess you, that's what we do. You know he had this conversation with someone, like one of his buddies. Yes, he was like, look, yeah. is Scrooge that bad? And then right, he talked right. it out. Yeah, it's like or he workshopped yet, like, a bit and then took it on yeah. stage too early. Or worse yet, like he's had, like one of his kids came home and was like, we read Christmas Carol and Scrooge. Like, you know, let me tell you something, kid. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, your teacher's then, adding a lot of sass in there. Yeah, and then like turn the kids into monsters that, you know. <laughs> right. Uh, oh, fuck. Scrooge. Uh, Scrooge provided jobs. <laughs> like, <laughs> that, there were some quotes about Victorian scholars being like, "Fuck what!" Like yeah, their yeah, heads yeah. exploding. Like, that can't. That's not jumping yeah. out of windows. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. I can't. Well, not on this planet. That's can't it. do it. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Ronald told the Congressional Medal of Honor Society a story about a pilot who was honored for going down with his plane. This was later revealed to be a completely fake story. When questioned, Press Secretary Larry Speaks said, quote, if you tell the same story five times, it's true. 
Well, there oh. you go. Oh, I didn't know that. Wait a minute. I, I didn't know that either. I got to try that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Damn. Wow. That's lucky. There you go. It's the secret. Yeah, it is. It's the secret. <laughs> it is a secret. <laughs> uh, a columnist did some research and discovered the story was a piece of fiction from a 1944 issue of Reader's Digest. There oh, you there go. Oh. The second half. <laughs> <laughs> He's now just a Reader's Digest like ransom yeah, note. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just oh my god. Cobbled together bits. You know, laughter is the best medicine. <laughs> Anyway, Ron, what about the genocide? <laughs> Oops, sorry. The I was just petting Lassie over here. That's a stapler. <laughs> oh, good girl. Look at her leg go. Sorry, Millie. <laughs> <laughs> Millie. It's still a stapler. Okay. Um. <laughs> a couple of weeks later, Ronald told a rabbi he filmed concentration camps during World War this, II. This, you gotta, someone's got to pull him aside <laughs> yeah. and just be like, hey, I'm not sure what's happening over here, but listen, here's one yeah. thing I've got to imprint upon yeah. you. Ix nay on the Auschwitz <laughs> no, a, no more of right? the DP mm. and Auschwitz stuff. Concentration <laughs> <laughs> Call me Dutch. I want to get a haircut. Oh boy, yeah, this is not. Here's the baseball scores. <laughs> I read baseball scores to Hitler. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh god. Oh. Uh, so. Do you think the cops have a chance to <laughs> run? I do. I really do, Eddie. They have no bench. No, they don't, but they're starting <laughs> pitching. Uh, Ronald had uh, created a task force on food assistance to get to the bottom of all, bottom of all these stories about hungry people. Right, <laughs> yeah. Let's figure out what he's <laughs> meant. With, yeah, hungry people were his Loch Ness monster. <laughs> all the pictures, they, they're they always blurry. I don't know. It always seemed very blurry. <laughs> After a few months, the tasks the task force report stated there was no evidence of great hunger. One member, Dr. George Graham, uh, said, "Quote: Black children are probably the best nourished group in the United States." That's a hor- just horrifying <laughs> prism to view things yeah, through. Yeah, yeah. Ronald was satisfied with the report. Oh, oh, good. That's nice. The last Marines were pulled out of Lebanon in February 1984. As an aide briefed reporters about the pullout, Ronald was 30 feet away, arm wrestling the publisher of a bodybuilding magazine. Okay. Um, sure. <laughs> Not, I, I don't know. I, got, I don't have anything to say. Uh, hey, 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 hey um, uh, Wolf, let him win. All right. Let him win. All right. It. It's literally like there's a toddler. It is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> his elbows up. The yeah. guy's just like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, he, he was nearby with his busy box. <laughs> Oh God! He was he was busy pouring a cup of rice into an empty cup and back and forth. <laughs> it really calmed him down. Oh God! Wolf, you want some of my magic beans? <laughs> All right, I should, uh... In April, the Wall Street Journal. Remember when the Wall Street Journal actually broke stories? Uh, yeah, fun no, time before right. Murdoch bought them. They were. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, they're they were. It was a newspaper. It was a newspaper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In April, the Wall Street Journal revealed. Reagan had Nicaragua's harbors mined, which was a violation of international law and an act of war. (laughs) Nicaragua sued in the International Court of Justice, which ordered the United States to pay reparations. The White House said the court had no jurisdiction over the U.S. and rejected the judgment. The next day, Ronald declared Law Day USA. Quote, (laughs) without law, there can be no freedom, only chaos and disorder. Uh I mean, it's uh, just uh, like it's fantastic. Just, it's, it's like it is. It is a child solution. <laughs> it, yeah, it is. It's uh, the innocence of I, a child. But I said it's law day now. Yeah. So we have law. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> now we can mine I, wherever we want. Law day. Now, the, the carpet is now lava. Lava. So don't walk on the carpet. Thank you. Thank you. It, it's a fucking toddler. giving a press conference <laughs> to a wall. Thank you. <laughs> now I'm going to take questions now from the bowling yeah. trophies. <laughs> At a press conference, Ronald claimed his environmental record was, quote, one of the best kept secrets of his presidency. Uh huh. You know right. what? They kept it really secret. <laughs> they really did. I don't remember hearing about they anything. They never released it. <laughs> did a really good job of that one. A reporter asked how his disgraced and fired ex 
EPA chief fit in with that? And Larry Speaks ordered the lights turned off. In the darkness, <laughs> Ronald said, quote, my guardian says I can't speak. <laughs> His yeah. press secretary literally called a timeout. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> call, they called a goddamn timeout. From the darkness. Oh, I can't from, speak about yeah. that. Well, excuse me, we're adults. <laughs> what happened? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> my guardian. <laughs> oh, shit. My guardian. Fantastic. What? Uh, uh, okay. I don't want to not have juice and crackers. <laughs> <laughs> he won't cut the crust off if I speak. <laughs> Uh, night, night. <laughs> we all go nigh now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I went boom, boom. <laughs> he did not go boom, boom. <laughs> President did not go boom, boom. No, for the record. Yeah, go boom, boom. Around this time, a pattern began to emerge that was first noticed on August 1st, 1984. Ronald was asked a question by reporters about arms control. And they're at the ranch. Mm-hmm. And he stands silently, grunting and shrugging. Sorry. And tell uh, Nancy. Hang, hang on. Uh, like, just going like. Uh, 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 <laughs> like, he, like, I don't care. I don't know where from. Until Nancy lowered her head and quietly said. Oh, I've seen this clip. Doing everything we can. Ronald then said, quote, we're doing everything we can. This then happened repeatedly for the rest of his presidency. Yeah. Wow. When Mommy Cyrano de Bergerac's him. Really? Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. There's, there's video of it's, that. It happens. He's got all his the little time. cowboy hat on and he's waving. Yeah. We're doing everything we can. We're yeah. doing everything we can. We kept it over and over. Yeah. Wow. A congressional study came out showing Ronald's uh, cuts pushed 500,000 people into poverty, the majority children. Poverty was at now at an 18 year high. Walter Mondale won the Democratic Party nomination, and during the campaign, Ronald had moments of incoherence and was not sharp in debates. In one debate, he blanked out at one point, and during his closing argument, he said, quote, I'm all confused now. I remember that footage, too. He is he was saved by them calling time because That's he right. literally should go, and as I drive up that california co- it, it was yeah he was he's clearly spent they go oh that's time sir um, and if they had not called time god knows what he would have said yeah. that might have sunk it. it he looked so crazy wow i remember that so clearly wow <laughs> concern uh, from people leads the white house to have a doctor declare ronald is in qu- is quote mentally alert Right, mm-hmm. right. Oh. Which they haven't been doing for the other years did for some he, reason. Yeah. Did he identify a lion on a test or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. Triangle in the triangle. Right like that, Ronnie. Boom. But Americans did not like any negative news about Ronald. Reporter Leslie Stahl said, quote, The idea that the public has come to feel they have a vested interest in protecting him is fascinating to me. Jimmy Carter's take was, quote, President Reagan doesn't always check the facts before he makes statements, and the press accepts it as kind of amusing. Right. Yeah. Which is really It was entertaining. It right. Right. That's right. And, and now we're in the mutant version of that right, right now. Right. Uh, so the, uh, the Chicago Tribune wrote, quote, Mr. Reagan's ignorance about the Soviet Union and his airheaded rhetoric on the issues of foreign policy and arms control have reached the limit of tolerance and have become an embarrassment to the U.S. and a danger to world peace. Oh, this was that. part of their endorsement of Ronald Reagan. Oh, my God. What? what? <laughs> wait. I'm sorry. Go back and wait. Yes. <laughs> this is part of their endorsement. This guy is a pudding-headed Mr. maniac. Mr. Reagan's <laughs> ignorance about the Soviet Union and his airheaded rhetoric on the issues of foreign policy and arms control have reached the limit of tolerance and have become an embarrassment to the U.S. and a what? danger to world peace. Anyway, vote for him. What? I, w- I want to read the rest of that. St- what? How do they then pull out of that yeah, nosedive? Well, right. where, where's the switch? I think because they say the economy is doing better. Uh, oh, right. And, uh, you know, they go, because Mondale also said he was going to raise taxes. Right, right. Biggest, I know. He the, just came out and said, I'm going to raise taxes, and Reagan will too. He's just not going to tell you. Well, right. Okay. Yeah, you, <clears throat> you can't do that. Yeah. 
Not Ronald, to us. Ronald won every single state except for Minnesota. Yep. He was the oldest president elected, 73 years old. A new staff came in. Chief of Staff Don Regan was a former Marine commander and chairman and CEO of Merrill Lynch. He was good. worth $40 million. Good. good, good, good. Go. Get him in God. there. They understand yeah. the plight of the everyman. Oh, yeah. Pat Buchanan. Oh, good. Crossfire host, writer of the horrible anti-gay op-ed, admirer of Nazis and Holocaust denier, became the new White House communications director. All right. That feels like a good wrestling it's intro really for him. <laughs> <laughs> For years, Ronald got much of his information from the extremely right-wing Human Events magazine. He read it religiously and made notes. Are you getting emotional? Yeah. All right. His new aides were, quote, horrified that he was reading it. I'm surprised he's allowed to call his aides aides at this point <laughs> with his <laughs> level of denial. <laughs> My helpers. Yeah. <laughs> Don Regan tried to stop the subscription from reaching him, but it went to the residents. He tried to get aides to hide it. When Ronald realized what was going on, he ordered several subscriptions. So wow. things are totally normal. Jeez. In 1984, there were 7,239 reported cases of AIDS in the U.S. Total deaths were 5,596. Ronald still had said nothing. Wow. Scientists concluded AIDS was caused by HIV. Lester at a press conference. Lord. Lester, is he going to do anything, Larry? Larry. Lester, I have not heard him express anything. Sorry. Lester, you mean he has expressed no opinion about this epidemic? Larry, trying to keep from laughing. Wow. No, but I must confess I haven't asked him about it. Lester, will you ask him, Larry? Larry. Have you been checked? The press pool bursts into laughter. Wow. It's the, what are you, gay? Yeah, and it's, it's working. That, it's that yeah. attitude. And that's it's the, enough. Yeah, that's enough. That's, oh, my God. An unidentified uh, person in the press pool. Is the president going to ban mouth-to-mouth kissing? Lester, wow. what? Pardon? I didn't hear your answer. Larry, laughing. Ah, it's hard work. I don't get paid enough. Is there anything else we need to do here? Wow. Just crazy. There you go. Could you imagine being a gay person? No. I mean, we were in or, San Francisco. Or, it, was ima- I mean, fucking, imagine, it was a fucking nightmare to watch. And this is what's going on with your government? Imagine yeah. having AIDS and like being scared out of your fucking and mind. And that's the answer. seeing and that's, that it is completely people are laughing. It's like a punchline. And, yeah. and they're doing like 50 style jokes about yeah. it. Right, right. It, it's just and it's like, crushing. And, it, and it's, yeah, it's crushing. Right. And, there's, and there's nowhere to go. There's, there's nowhere to go. <clears throat> Rock Hudson went to France for an experimental treatment and had trouble getting admitted to the hospital. He was a longtime friend of Ronald and Nancy. Hudson's agent reached out and asked the White House for help. An aide asked Nancy if they should intervene. She says no. Wow. Yeah. Because <clears throat> it wasn't uh, affecting her directly. Right. She doesn't care. For the 40th anniversary of VE Day, uh-huh. Ronald accepts an invitation from the German chancellor to visit a German military cemetery. Mm-hmm. In Bitburg. Uh, oh, Nancy no. n- nixes an additional visit to Dachau because it is, quote, too negative and depressing. Well, yeah, that's, I mean, that was, that's the main thing about Dachau. Well, <laughs> also, it was very negative. <laughs> well, very I mean, yeah, it's very you know. true. And that's Nancy the first is knocking Although, against Nancy that, yeah. is the victim. The gift shop is great. Yes. Unbelievable. Yeah. I also, I mean, it probably would be tough because Ronald would just go there and be like, well, I remember when I filmed all this. <laughs> the crew was here, Terry yeah. with the boom. <laughs> Classic Terry. The White House says Ronald will ray a, leaf at the, a wreath at the cemetery, only to learn 49 members of Hitler's SS are buried there. Don Regan tells Ronald not to go. Ronald, quote, I've promised. What? Ronald tells the press, quote, We have to put the past behind us. The soldiers were victims just as surely as the victims in the concentration camp. Same thing. Uh, Yeah. uh, (laughs) ah, No. What? Yeah. uh, So President of the United States of America said that uh, the Nazi SS were the same kind of victims as the the people the Nazi SS fucking murdered. Committed genocide against. Genocide. Same thing. Same deal to Ronald Reagan. Yeah. And well, how's the press corps handling this? They're just like, oh, Ron. Another, he's at it again. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> I love the new, I again. love the new album. Oh, Ronnie. Yeah. I love the new stuff. But yeah. again, also, and, and I, it wasn't, the, the, there, there wasn't the infrastructure that we have now where people could express their admiration right. for this, but he was getting a lot of support right. because of this shit from white supremacist yeah, elements in America. Strategy. You know, now 
the, you know, David Duke and all these people, the Stormfront, they, thank you, Donald. Back then it was very quiet, but they, right. they knew what the fuck they were doing. 52% right. of people thought he shouldn't go. That means 48%. Right. 48% were like, yeah, yep. great, fine. The Senate and House passed resolutions against him going. At, at the White House, a concentration camp survivor just happens to be giving a medal, getting a medal. Oh, boy. So right when this is happening, this guy just has him getting a medal at the time. He gives a speech directly to Ronald asking him not to go and says, quote, your place is with the victims of the SS. Ronald literally makes a sad face. What kind of... Why are you being mean to me? Yeah. Well, he did, he did a... Mean? And now to give the Congressional Medal of Awkward. <laughs> uh, <laughs> finally. Holy shit. <clears throat> uh, wow. So... From Ronald's diary, quote, the, Oh, no. The That's got to be a beast of a thing to go through. <laughs> I mean, why would you A lot you of this ever? is just slides, drawings of slides. Why yeah. would you ever have a diary if you're president? Don't yeah. have a diary. Yeah. Yeah. I need a chef hat. More tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> From Ronald's diary, quote, The uproar about my trip to Germany and the Bitburg Cemetery was cover stuff in Newsweek and Time. They just won't stop. Well, I'm go not going to cancel anything no matter how much the bastards scream. What? Just stop. That's why I hate the Fuck politician's it. inability to just say you fucked up. Like, guys, hey, I fucked up. Yeah, I'm, I fucked up. I'm not going to go. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. You right. know what? I, yeah, I thought it over. I changed my mind. Yeah. I got more information. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Like, like people do 80 times a day. Which That's shows, what you do all the time. Yeah, and it shows like process and thought Jesus and, Christ. you know. Yeah. Anyway, he went to Bitburg and laid down a wreath uh, at a place where the SS were. Well, we got a great Ramon song out of it. <laughs> did we, we really did. It's a yeah, great did, song. Yeah. So. Upon returning from his masterful PR trip, Ronald pushes Congress to fund the Contras. At one point, he said, quote, just had a verbal message delivered to me from Pope John Paul urging for us to continue our efforts in Central America. The Vatican immediately issues a denial. <laughs> he passed out here once. <laughs> just for the record. He napped here. Yeah. There is a New York Times magazine article titled The Mind of President Reagan. Oh, wow. In which an aide says, quote, you have to treat him as if you were the director and he was the actor. And you tell him what to say and what not to say. And only then does he say the right thing. That's really reassuring. That's good. Wow. A couple of days later, Princess Diana visits and they hold a the dinner for her. And Ronald toasts Princess Diana and calls her Princess David. Oh my God! What? This was David? Oh God! It's not even the same gender. No, it's, it's, not. A, it's no, not. No, 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 no it's not. It's no, way yeah. off. I mean, nobody can oh over. Nobody can God. be like, no, that's fine. Let's just keep going. I'd like to send a greeting to Princess Dawkin, Dawkin <laughs> and her beautiful husband Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure, they're glad they made the trip. Cool. So oh. seven, yeah, seven American <laughs> hostages are being held in Beirut, Beirut by different groups. Um, a plan is created to sell weapons to Israel, and then Israel would sell other weapons to Iran. Then Iran might possibly release the hostages. Cool. Okay. Ronald's diary quote: "It could be a heart. It could be a breakthrough on getting our seven kidnapped victims back." Oliver North is brought in to run the operation. And the operation has expanded. Huh. Now, Congress has forbidden the U.S. from sending money to Contras. So what if the Saudis gave the Contras $1 million a month because we were selling them weapons? Brilliant. Oliver North sets up accounts for the Saudis to put money into. Other countries put money in. Even Ross Perot kicks in $2 million. I'm oh. good for it. <laughs> oh, Mount. Here you go. I tip yeah, Stop them damn commies. <laughs> and then... Money for the Contras comes from drug sales. The CIA is delivering weapons to the Contras and then flying a plane full of cocaine to sell in the U.S. That's crazy. George Bush is in charge of all of this. It is suggested to North they cut out Israel and just sell the weapons straight to Iran. So they do. Uh. They mark up the price from $3.7 million to $10 million and give the extra profit to the Contras. Wow. wow. There God you go. damn. <clears throat> It's a good fucking deal, we right? Cut out the middleman. Yeah, it's and like a Robert Wright video. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. That is crazy. And so, like, I mean, brazen, obviously. All right. Yeah, yeah. 
White House Communications Director Pat Buchanan is a huge fan of South African apartheid. Oh. And he gives... Did he play Sun City? (laughs) 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 And he gives Ronald right-wing propaganda attacking anti-apartheid protests. Wow. In a radio interview on August 24th, 1985, Ronald says South Africa has, quote, eliminated the segregation that we once had in our own country. The type of thing where hotels and restaurants and places of entertainment and so forth were segregated, that has all been eliminated. What? With apartheid? Black wait. people in South Africa can't vote. Or they can't use yeah. public facilities. Yeah, I know. Wait. It's, wait. it's not, I mean. And apartheid, we, <laughs> apartheid is segregation. We, we <laughs> that doesn't It's like, make, it's, yes, it's. <laughs> It's I to... cured your cold by giving you the flu. Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> what? So Buchanan is just feeding him fucking bullshit. And he's just And a he's puppet, just eating so he's it just and like, sucking I, it in and yeah, spitting right, it out. Yeah, right, right. Jesus it's Christ. like that age where like you can get your kids to swear, but it doesn't really impact it, right. them in the future. It's like yeah. right now you've got a real sweet spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just whispered in his ear. Uh, Ronald's ambassador to the UN vetoes a UN Security Council resolution condemning apartheid. Mm. In 1985, there are now 15,527 reported cases of AIDS, 12,529 deaths. Ronald finally says the word AIDS in public, but does not address the nation. People are now losing their minds over AIDS. They're calling for quarantines. Nurses are quitting instead of treating AIDS patients. Funeral directors are refusing to embalm the dead. Even Pat Buchanan wants the president to address AIDS in a speech. The president is asked if he would send his child to a school with a child who had AIDS. And Ronald says he understands both sides. Oh, my God. What? The house of two boys with AIDS who get a court order to attend school in Florida is burned down. (sighs) Rock Hudson announces he has AIDS and dies soon after. Ronald and Nancy say nothing. Jesus. But he did add AIDS jokes to his joke repertoire. Quote, one doctor said to the other, I've got the solution. I serve them a special dinner of crepes and filet of sole. What does that do? It's not a cure. No, it's not, said the doctor. But the advantage is that I can just slide it under the door and I don't have to touch them. Ronald would then laugh and laugh and laugh at his own joke. And he told the joke many times. And I'm sure it killed in front of those monsters that he went, oh, Jesus. In December 1985, 60 Minutes does a segment on the state of Ronald's mind. Oh, boy. A Berkeley professor argues that Ronald can't tell the difference between reality and movies. Uh, well, I think that's very I have fair. that problem, though. I, really can't, I, can't for that. I have that I, problem sometimes, so yeah. 50% of the time, I think I'm in Tron. <laughs> well, let me text Morpheus. Wait, oh, he's not it. my friend. Sorry, minute. there I am again. Uh. <laughs> then 60 Minutes traces the evolution of one of Ronald's anecdotes from where he credits it, credits it as a movie scene to where he tells it as if it actually happened. Wow. Mm-hmm. Oh, with like clips, like it keeps yeah, changing. Yeah, like they, wow. break, they break of, it down right. all the way. It is the least popular segment in 60 Minutes history. Wow, so we just so did get like care. hate mail and stuff. Yeah, people are wow. furious. Right. Keep, don't ruin our illusion. Yeah, which is so crazy. I mean, it's, it is so crazy. I think there's also a level, because remember, there's the nukes thing there, because I was, I was terrified you know, people are scared of nuclear war, but I was terrified that a man without a brain was in charge of the nuclear weapons. Right. So I think there's a level of people not wanting to think this can possibly be real. It's unfathomable. And that yeah. also because he was an actor who could seem presidential, they're like, don't take away the security blanket. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Don't take it. Don't take away my delusion because it makes me happy. I, I need it. And we are still there. I mean, you, we really are still there where it's just like, yeah. I just rather believe. Yeah. <laughs> like, right, let right, me right. leave out cookies for Santa. <laughs> yeah. Ronald has a third kin- uh, skin cancer removed from his nose. Reporters question him about the reoccurrence. Ronald, quote, I'm not a medical. I'm not a lawyer, and I'm not a medical either. Okie dokie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I am reading for the part of medical later today on La Brea. Ron. <laughs> but I am a shoe. <laughs> all right, Ron. In Thank a, you. Thank you. That's all. Thank a, you. No, and the boot and children <laughs> live inside me. There's one mommy. <laughs> Turn the lights off. <laughs> 
Rollins is becoming more and more irritated with reporters and at one point is caught on tape telling, calling them sons of bitches. Mm. When asked about it, Larry Speaks explained Ronald said, quote, it's sunny and you're rich. Oh, wow. Yeah. Way to go, Larry. So yeah. charming. There's that charm. Woo! Uh, another oh, one for Larry. Nailed it. He said he's taking his son to the beach. Hey, I'm Larry. <laughs> The Space Shuttle Challenger explodes on January 28th, 1986. Pat Buchanan is asked what the president's initial reaction was. Quote, the president was stunned. He said something like, isn't that the one with the teacher on it? Wow, there is really... He gives a great dis- speech about the disaster on TV, and his approval rating shoots up to 78%. Ugh, we are so this simple. Sp- the spaceship went boom. <laughs> oh. Yes. It did. He's right. It did. <laughs> People was inside it, maybe. <laughs> yes. In January 1986, Ronald helps brutal dictators Jean Claude Baby Doc Duvier of Haiti and Fernand Marcos of the Philippines escape their just fates during revolts so they can live out their lives in wealth and luxury. Both murdered tons of people, but were anti-communist. Ronald gives Marcos sanctuary in the U.S. They were flown to Guam with 89 AIDS, jewelry, gold bars, and $7 million in cash. Jesus. Wow. By 1986, there were 28,712 reported cases of AIDS. Total dead, 24,559. Ronald says nothing, but his budget calls for deep cuts to AIDS research. Ah. There you go. At the 1986 centenary uh, rededication of the Statue of Liberty, the Reagans are sitting next to French President Mitterrand and his wife. On the stage, Bob Hope Here we go. says, quote, <laughs> I just heard that the Statue of Liberty has AIDS. Did I mention 25,000 people are dead? 25,000 people. I, I know this story, by the way. Uh, I just heard that the Statue of Liberty has AIDS, but she doesn't know if she got it from the mouth of the Hudson or the Staten Island Ferry. Oh, my God. The TV cameras show the Reagans' heads going back and laughing as the Mitterrands look appalled. Oh, my God. Although I will look. that Yes, that was awful. Bob Hope's daughter read him the riot act on that. And oh, he good. subsequently went back on TV and was like, you know what? That was wrong of me to do that. He actually... Apologize for that. Okay. Shit. Expressed regret he and a change of opinion. Regret and a change of opinion. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Because his daughter I like think, was like, Bob, uh, sit down. You need to hear this. So. I think you have to. At some point, you got to realize old people are old and they're doing a thing. And then yeah. and if they change, good. Yeah. Give them credit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's shitty that he said that. Yes. But it's horrible. Yeah. But, but it, unlike Ron, he was like, Oh fuck, I didn't know that. Yeah. Right. He had an actual yeah. change. Yes. Yeah. Whereas uh, and he had a similar one before funding. in the early, in the late sixties. He did something and. And all these people like it was either like an army thing, and they were like, "How can you do this like during Vietnam?" And he actually was like, "You know what? I didn't hmm. think about that." Yeah. So wow, just like comedians today. <laughs> 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 exactly. <laughs> so evolved. God, what a bunch of fucking babies. Uh, so uh, Ronald's longtime friend and advisor Roy Cohn died of AIDS. The Reagans did not go to his funeral. By 1987, the total number of reported AIDS. Cases in the U.S. was 50,000, total dead, 40,849. And he's still cutting the funding and all the... And I mean, he, he, and asked for, he asked for an amount of funding, and Congress was like, yeah, we're going to double that. Like, right. he just... Right. <sighs> Reagan's ex-director of the Office of Management and Budget releases a book. An excerpt is printed in Newsweek. Ronald is portrayed as clueless. In, in it, a description of the Secretary of Defense is defending his huge military budget by showing Ronald cartoon drawings of soldiers in different states of preparedness. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I mean, no. <laughs> and I go there? Not really, Ron, not really, but still. Am I the one in the dress? <laughs> you, well, it depends, I'm not sure. We, we must get the Abrams tank to protect brave Beetle Bailey. <laughs> Who, He's our own along Leo. with Sarge and Sarge's dog Otto. He's our own Leo. He really is. Get me Gomer Pyle. <laughs> <laughs> He's, just, oh. He's pressing a sandwich. And Nadine, get me Gomer Pyle. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, he, they literally. He is literally a child. They're literally yeah. th- and like it's they're, not, and he's it's, showing him he, how he needs different amounts of money yes. for the 
for the and, defense budget by showing pictures of soldiers <laughs> with like less equipment. And like, mental yeah. incapabilities yeah. and I mean, disease is very sad. It's crazy when people shield yes. the president's that's reality. The right, 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 that's right. the problem that's here. Why it's Not only that, but America seeing it and ignoring right, it. Like right. It is so, a so fucking and, and getting angry when people aren't being, they're, they're right. just going, hey, I think there might be a problem. We should, you shut up. It's Yeah, we still experience it with well, truth well, all the yes, time. Yes. I mean... After this comes out, the press focuses on the ex-cabinet member betraying the president instead of the content of the book. Mm -hmm. Of course. On April 5th, Libya bombs uh, a West Berlin nightclub, killing three people, including a U.S. serviceman. Ronald then drops 60 tons of munitions on Libya on April 14th. Two of Qaddafi's sons are injured and an infant daughter is killed. It is a clear assassination attempt on Qaddafi, which is illegal. And that's it. Nothing well, else happens. Nothing happens. Yeah. Everyone's fine. Well, the yeah. Senate. I think that'll all end in pretty well for Qaddafi, if memory serves. <laughs> in July, Ed Meese gets a 1,960-page report on pornography that he had ordered from a commission to study porn. Oh, boy. This is, I mean, if this isn't some dude just getting ready to really perv out on a Sunday <laughs> night, what is? Oh, you got that? All right. Let me just have a look. I'll take a look at that. Oh, yeah. See you next month. The study cost $500,000. The government charges $35 to get a two-volume collection. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. It becomes a collector's <laughs> item because it may be the best listing for porn in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Ed Meese after dark. This handsomely bound two-volume set has got all of your favorite. Yeah. Including Yank My Doodle, It's a Dandy, <laughs> The Greatest Glory Ever Hold. <laughs> Sink my Hinkley. <laughs> <laughs> Holy God. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so it just had titles listed. And there it you was go. Just like, uh, on October 5th, 1986, a plane carrying weapons is shot down by the Santa. Denistas over Nicaragua. The only survivor says he works for the CIA. A month later, a Lebanese news magazine prints an expose outlining the arms for hostages deal. Reagan goes on TV to deny the story. 79% of people don't believe him. Wow. Whoa. Finally. So what, but hang on. Why do we go back and forth as a public yeah. to, what is hey, don't be point? mean to this guy. Let's leave. And then, well, that's bullshit. Yeah, I know. It's just so, oh it my is God. Weird. Yeah. He then goes on TV to say he knew nothing about it, and Poindexter resigned, and North was fired. Right. A good look for your, your yeah, case. Yeah, really good. He later tells North, quote, this is going to make a great movie one day. <laughs> I think it already might be. Yeah. <laughs> Someone Pretty yelled, sure. cut. I need yeah. to go 10-2. <laughs> Uh, here's the pay. cocaine capers, and uh, we get Joe Piscopo, and we also got to uh, get a monkey that looks like Joe Piscopo. Oh, line, uh, uh, Mr. President. Line, Mr. No. President. This is the State of the Union. Yeah. <laughs> line. line. Yeah. Could you clear my sight lines, please? <laughs> so. The grips are moving back and forth. It's hard. Can I get an apple box? <laughs> and by that I mean a box full of apples. I'll still stand on it. <laughs> Special Prosecutor Lawrence Welsh is brought in to investigate. In an interview with Time Magazine, Ronald says he only found out a few days before the link between the Iranian arms sales and uh -huh. the Contras. I mean, how? But he didn't blame his staff. Quote, Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North was involved in all our operations. He has a fine record. He is a national hero. My only criticism is that I wasn't told everything. Ronald then blames the press. Quote, For what? What is driving me up the wall is that this wasn't a failure until the press got a tip from that rag in Beirut and began to play it up. I told them that publicly, pu that publicity could destroy this, that it could get people killed, and they went right on. The whole thing boils down to a great irresponsibility on the part of the press. I mean, unbelievable, really. At Gotta least he's put still our got cri our crimes in the paper like this. And he it's and ridiculous. it's amazing that he can still kind of function when he needs to just fully yeah, bullshit. Yeah. He's like gets himself off yeah. the mat and is able to. He's got this like weird like nitro tank for when he needs to engage right, the right, bullshit. Right, he's suddenly right. really he's, focused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but I mean, he, he's literally talking about treason. Yes, and yeah. he's calling the rags like yeah. it's like yeah. a gossip rag. 
Ronald's approval rating is now 46%. There we mm. go. Don Regan loses it in a staff meeting and puts the blame for Iran-Contra on Robert, Robert McFarland, who he has always hated. He yells, quote, let's not forget whose idea this was. It was Bud's idea. When you give lousy advice, you get lousy results. This is leaked to the press. Nancy wants Don Regan out as chief of staff, and she's leaking stuff. Oh, wow. She pressures Ronald so much on a getaway to Camp David that he turns around and screams at her, quote, get off my goddamn back. Oh, Jesus. Yes, Ron. Yes, Ron. Wow. It's weird how Iran Contra will make you freak out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When, you, when, you, when you do the most massive treason in U.S. history, it gets you a little tense. They said in Cosmo it's one of the five reasons it, most couples break. It, it really is. Contra. Yeah, yeah. Contra, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a big relationship yeah. cooler, Iran Contra. His approval rating is now at 41%. Ronald has prostate surgery, and answer, Nancy orders he do nothing for six weeks. Her astrologer, quote, told her that January was a bad month for the president. <laughs> it's not allowed to be that for the president. Yeah. He's the president. Oh, God. I mean, literally, they asked an astrologer about every single every thing. Every move, yeah. Like, literally this? every single thing. Here's the new show I want to see. It's about the astrologer living in the White House. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the cakewalk life. But also realizing, like, I can affect U.S. policy. I'm in I, charge yeah. of America. I, I, I can mean, decide what goes. A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, yeah. yeah. The Reagans are said to be stunned that their longtime allies are not backing them. Huge right-wing douchebag Congressman Bob Dornan, quote, Oh. When someone says, but he was giving arms to people he knew had killed our Marines, it's hard to respond to that. <laughs> Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> and by the way, for Bob, for Bob to say yeah. that, who Bob Dornan yeah. is a fucking lunatic. Yeah. Wow. For him to go against Reagan is wow. Oh wow. yeah, yeah. That's when they knew they'd crossed a Rubicon. Like, did we lose Dornan? Yeah, we're <laughs> fucked. Right, we're fucked on this one. Seventy-eight uh, percent of Americans believe there was a cover-up. It comes out that they sent the Iranians a cake at one point. <laughs> That's just, you know well, who, who signed off on yeah. any of that a cake. Oh, he shouldn't have. <laughs> oh. oh, red velvet. <laughs> we can't get that here. Ron. <laughs> I can't stay mad at you. <laughs> and it's Braille, too. <laughs> what? And it's on the top. It says, thank you for the hostages. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks for the hostages with a candle. Yeah. Why is there a candle? <laughs> so much to blow it out. McFarlane goes on Nightline to distance himself from the Cake situation. Uh, wow. Cake, situation. cake gate. <laughs> Quote, there was a cake on a mission. <laughs> this is an amazing <laughs> moment already. This is already. Uh, yes. <laughs> All right. There was a cake. We admit the cake. <laughs> you happy Woodward and Bernstein? <laughs> All right. You track down the cake. All right. All right. So apparently you were talking to deep frosting and he leaked it. <laughs> Holy shit. We're calling the baker to Capitol Hill. Uh, what fucking asshole said bring an ice cream cake to Iran? Which one of you fucking... It's a goddamn desert climate. Quote, there was a cake on a mission. I didn't buy it, bake it, cook it, eat it, present it, or otherwise get involved with it. The cake was the, the product... Dr. defense. <laughs> the cake was the product of a spontaneous idea of Colonel North. So Oliver North was like, send him a cake. And they're like, yeah, for yeah, sure. He came up with the idea of Fuck sending him a cake. Hell. Wow. A month later, McFarlane tries to kill himself by taking 20 Valium. Wow. Jesus. That's a lot of Valium. Yeah. 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 Uh, and that's a lot of guilty. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah seriously. <laughs> yeah. The Tower Commission had been put together to look into Iran-Contra. When the Tower report is delivered to Ronald, it says he traded guns for hostages and his, quote, detached style in which considerable authority was delegated to subordinates allowed Iran-Contra to move forward without adequate scrutiny or supervision. Ronald is upset but remains in denial. Mm. Don Regan is savaged in the report. And then Don finds out he is fired when the press announces Howard Baker is the new chief of staff. Oh, wow. It is believed that Nancy did this. Wow. Hell Yeah. So there really is no president at this point. No, it's yeah. just sort of like... This is like Woodrow Wilson after the stroke. Right, it's a costume. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It really is. Speaking to the American Camping Association, Nancy says of Don Regan, quote, 
I don't think most people associate me with leeches or how to get them off, but I know how to get them off. I'm an expert at it. And then she turned into a spider. Yeah, right. yeah. I yeah. mean, can you talk about camping? <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of the demo here. Yeah. Uh, tent pegs, yeah. maybe uh, something. <laughs> T- tie your food up in a tree so the bears don't. We're kind of open for that. Do you like hot dogs or hamburgers yeah. better? I tied Don down and put a hot poker in his ass. All right, Nancy. We were kind of looking for s'more recipes. We thought you were going to be listing out some of your favorite s'more recipes. I'm not sure who booked this. Holy oh, Christ. Fuck. The press corps asks Larry Speaks about the report describing Reagan as incredibly ignorant. He tells the press to, quote, bug off. Whoa. This guy's real good. And calls Whoa. a New York Times article, quote, phooey, P-H-O-O-E-Y. <laughs> is, is this man a comic strip? <laughs> yeah, did he, did he admit like a stream of yeah. like ampersands and yes. asterisks and yes. exclamation is this points? the first man who talks in talk bubbles? <laughs> <laughs> phooey. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. Bunch of phooey. <laughs> On his 76th oh. birthday, Ronald enters a room filled of staff gathered for a surprise party. Oh, no. He is very startled and remains so until Nancy whispers, quote, it's your staff. Oh, <laughs> no. What? <laughs> Who are these doggies? <laughs> no, no, Ron. No, 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 no. We hit the pound. <laughs> on March 4th, 1987, Ronald addressed the nation on TV, quote, a few months ago, I told the American people I did not trade arms for hostages. My heart and my best intentions still tell me that is true. But the facts and evidence tell me it is not. Yeah. Hey, wait yeah. a minute. So what he's saying is I did do it even though I believed really hard that I didn't. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> not an that's, out. That's how, that's how that translates. Yeah, and it really is like a very weird defense. It's yeah. insane. Like it doesn't make any Inside, I didn't want to do it. <laughs> yeah. Outside, I did it. I know what now, I said. I, I call on the American people to clap really hard because yeah. if you believe that I didn't do it, we can make <laughs> we this can go do away. It. Come on, everybody. Two, three, four. Oh. <sighs> wow. Congress holds hearings. Oliver North is given congressional immunity and admits everything. He admits lying to Congress and covering for Ronald. His hometown holds a parade in his honor. Sure. <laughs> Ronald starts to pretend he has laryngitis when reporters ask him questions. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this, I mean, honestly, what? Fantastic. The president is nine. Yeah. It, what? Yeah. I can't. <laughs> my voice. What? I mean, you're doing. It's yeah. like a hacky bit. I today, would, you know. T- today is backwards day, so I can't answer questions. <laughs> All right, everyone. The president is now a sitcom premise. Uh, each week, he'll have a new quirk. <laughs> Go flush, go flush the toilet while he's in the shower. Next week, he's going to hit his head and become evil Ron Reagan, and we're yeah. going to call him Raz. Now, I know that you guys are planning a surprise party, but he thinks you're planning on murdering him because <laughs> he's overhearing it wrong. Okay. So that's the energy we're walking into the surprise party with. He thinks the cake is a bomb and uh, that the candles are fuses. Surprise! Ah! All right. Uh, he actually shit his pants off. I've never seen that before. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> On April 1st, 1987, Ronald makes his first public speech about AIDS. Quote, April Fool's. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. right there. Oh, my God. He did it on fucking April <sighs> Fool's Day. Of course. God, you're right. Wow. What an Fuck. asshole. Anyway. Quote, when it comes to preventing AIDS, don't medicine and morality teach the same lessons? Wow. Oh, fuck off. I mean, really. It is unbelievable. He did not mention safe sex. He did say uh, they could do sex uh, education in schools if they taught abstinence. Mm -hmm. And Nancy could teach a class on sucking cock. (laughs) She's unbelievable. (laughs) It's like your cock's in a tongue blender. (laughs) I don't like telling tales out of school, but I saw her make Phil Silver's glasses fly off. (laughs) She blew Cary Grant so hard the back of his head collapsed in. She blew George Burns while shitting on a glass table over Danny Thomas. That's some nice stuff, Nancy. I said, that's my girl. 
<laughs> we turned it into a play. No, we didn't, Ron. Oh, oh. I wrote a one-man musical about it. No, you didn't. Oh. I'm going to go to my journal. That's the yellow pages. Uh, so, yeah. So a presidential AIDS commission is formed. Ronald agrees to put one homosexual on the 13-member board. Oh, the rest boy. are conservatives. What a great position for that person. <laughs> yeah. Right? Wow. Well, Thanks. Nice. Who just want to, like, shut down bathhouses and, and quarantine. Right. And, and exactly. you're yeah, right. Yeah. The U.S. then shuts down the border to immigrants with HIV. Hmm. Ronald goes on a nine-day European tour. This is when he says, quote, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Mm -hmm. It plays on TVs around the world, but he still has a 42% approval rating in the U.S. Ronald was hard of hearing and begins cupping his hand over his ear, pretending he can't hear reporters' questions. Wow. <laughs> Nicely That's done. That. There it is. That's Hello. the new one. What's the laryngitis yeah. thing? Yeah. Yeah. What are we going to do for sweeps? <laughs> so, what? I, I'm blind. What? Uh, <laughs> I'm blind. I can't see your words. <laughs> I, I don't have a tongue. <laughs> I'm three kids in a president outfit. <laughs> Uh, fuck. Uh, they also increase the noise of the helicopter when he gets off, so reporters have a hard time questioning <laughs> him. Just, I'm 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 a fucking Mr. <laughs> Magoo <laughs> cartoon. <laughs> imagine literally it's just like, imagine pitching that and then having traction. <laughs> yeah, we can well, make the helicopter. Hang on. Whoa, say that again, David. I just think if we make say, the helicopter oh, louder, then they can't hear the question. Holy shit! Get the mufflers <laughs> off of. Uh, Marine One right now. Imagine. I have nine <laughs> whistling peaks. <laughs> Here's what we do. Oh, my God. Hang on. When he's in press conferences, there's always an angry cockatoo next to him. <laughs> All right? I just see a loud, angry cockatoo. Brack! <laughs> I'm sorry. The cockatoo's screaming. Brack! I can't understand I'm, it. I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. Mr. Peppers is very angry. <laughs> Mr. Peppers today. hasn't eaten Brack! yet. I can't take any questions. Mr. Peppers has it cold. <laughs> the tactics. Oh, God. We will, we, we will only do press conferences and sawmills. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. One more time. They were. Just, that's a long board they cut. <laughs> oh, that's. Oh, that's. That's, uh, that's spruce. That's, that's uh, they cut spruce wood. today. It's the noisiest wood. What? What are the odds? <laughs> uh, God damn. Uh, uh, so. Ronald nominates Robert Bork as his third Supreme Court pick on July 1st, 1987. Bork is super right wing. Democrats defeat him 42 to 58, and Republicans are furious. It was, um, that was Teddy's thing. Teddy yeah, Kennedy was back alley yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Bork becomes a verb. The Republicans are literally still holding a grudge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, 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 oh, they yeah. literally think that them, uh, uh, taking Garland away, not allowing Obama to have yeah. a pick is for the, years. They think it's making up for that. Yep. It's crazy. Yep. Uh, so Ronald's next pick, uh, Douglas Ginsburg uh, admits his wife performed abortions and then he admits he smoked pot and Ronald withdraws the nomination. <laughs> wow. Probably pull that guy aside. Next. We lie at these. Uh, just so you know, this yeah. is total bullshit. You don't need to tell them what you're doing. I have smoked weed, and my wife has done that, yes. Yeah. All right, thanks, everybody. That's lunch. I used to fuck pigs in my fraternity. All right, All right. thanks, man. I'm going to go to the P.F. Chang's down the street. I'm out of here. That's me. It's my time. Thank you, guys. I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you. <laughs> the day of my time. I yielded. I fucked a goat. All right, thank you. <laughs> Wait, no, I'm fucking one now. Uh, <laughs> under the table. Nancy? Uh, so uh, Anthony Kennedy is the next choice, and he's confirmed 97 to 0. The stock market plummets in October. It's the largest drop ever. That's Black Monday, right? I don't. Is it Black? I think it might be. I think it, it's Black Monday. Yeah, it was really big. I think, yeah, it was crazy. Uh, Nancy has breast cancer and gets a radical mastectomy. Mm hmm. No more money is coming in, so the Contras sign a ceasefire agreement in March 88. It just goes to show you how many people they got to kill because we were giving them yeah. money. Yeah, exactly. A federal grand jury returns a 23-count indictment against Oliver North and three others. John Poindexter takes the fall, testifying he decided uh, not to inform the president. Ronald holds a press conference and lies. Quote, from all the investigation and everything else, we don't know where that money came from, and we don't know where it went. Wow. 
it's just money came yeah, and I don't know. Yeah. It comes and it goes. What do you want from me, man? Yeah. <laughs> That's when he puts his finger up the cockatoo's ass. There, he, there he is. Oh. oh, there he is. He's upset again. Yeah. Uh, oh, there. oh, I got an elephant. <laughs> Sorry, that's tiny. That's the new ambassador yeah. of elephants. <laughs> Who let a screaming goat in here? Oh, yeah. oh no, look at that. We're also opening a nursery in here, so it's going to be a lot of kids screaming. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take this one during symbol practice. <laughs> uh, oh, God. Asked about McFarland's guilty plea, Ronald said, quote, he just pleaded guilty to not telling Congress anything it wanted to know. I've done that myself. And then he caught himself, quote, no, don't distort that. No, uh, I just mean I think Congress <laughs> would like to be asking questions about almost anything. Uh, so, hey, again, there's still there signs. You know. He yeah, knows, yeah, yeah. He knows that. A, what did I say? <laughs> oh, that was a little honest. Where's my elephant? <laughs> Whoopsie poopsie. Uh, George Bush runs for president and Ronald campaigns for him. Bush claims he had no idea about Iran-Contra. In truth, it was run out of his office. And in his diary, he wrote he was one of the few people who knew all of the details. Wow. Bush. <laughs> April 11th, really doing some treason today. Yeah. I mean, these diaries are a little honest. I know. You'd think they'd be coded like how prisoners write letters God, to each I other know. or something. It's, fuck. You know? Uh, so Bush is elected. In his victory speech, he thanks Ronald, quote, one of the most decent men I've ever met. Imagine saying that. Oh. Ronald left office with the highest approval rating since FDR. The, the anti FDR, right? But just after all, after all of this Why? shit, yeah, 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 I couldn't figure what, what, it the what, fuck out. What is out. the number? Like I don't, I, fuck, I didn't write it down. But yeah, it's got to be way up there. But it's like after or after all of higher, this, we were at forty percent for so fucking long. Yeah, and then it, and then yeah, all that came the out thing? was bad shit. Yeah, yeah. There was nothing that happened we that just, was good. We do like his the fairy wife tale the, too the much. The mastectomy that yeah. might have had something to do right, with it. Right, right. Uh, but it's just fucking crazy. Yeah. And it is on us. I it's 100% on us. You know. Us. It's our fault. Yeah. Uh, so uh, he raised taxes 11 times, but the overall tax burn went down. Unemployment went down. Oh, right. The economy was decent. Right. Okay. Oh, okay. But in 87, yeah, it was still decent in 87. Yeah. Inflation dropped. The GDP grew. Military spending increased. Social services dropped. The national debt tripled. The income gap widened. Wow. 18 friends bought the Reagans a house in Santa Barbara for $2.5 million. This is the third house someone else bought for them. Yep. Time Magazine reports Nancy had continued to secretly borrow designer clothing during her entire time in the White House, <clears throat> which is a crime. Oh, yeah. wow. She violated the 1978 Ethics in Government Act requiring high-ranking officials to report gifts above $35. But a designer tells Time they were not considered gifts. Quote, we think of it as loans. She had promised to return all of the dresses, but she never did. Okay, so that's a gift. And yeah. she had now flown them out to Santa Barbara. There you go. But if they are loans, according to tax experts, she could have been found guilty of evading taxes on $1 million worth of taxable income. After the time story breaks, Nancy has her assistants begin returning the dresses quietly. Uh, right, okay. <laughs> Good. Uh, Good, Nancy. Yeah. In 1988, there are 82,600... Uh, 362 cases of AIDS and 61,816 deaths. God. Ronald Reagan did not say a word about AIDS in 1988. Surgeon General Coop did put out a pamphlet called Understanding AIDS. It was mailed to 107 million homes, the largest mass mailing in American history. Coop might be the only good person in Reagan's entire administration. Really? Okay. Wow. Yeah. He was very upset about what was happening. Right. And he's like a right wing Christian, but he was also. Right. You know, he walked yeah. it like he talked it. <clears throat> right. Yeah. yeah. Donald Reagan's book came out in May. Quote, virtually every major move and decision the Reagans made during my time as White House chief of staff was cleared in advance with a woman in San Francisco who drew up horoscopes to make certain oh that the God. planets mm -hmm. were in favorable alignment for the enterprise. Oh, my God. Uh, That's the chief of staff. Uh, so it is. it is ironic that... The first, like, one of the most conservative presidencies was kind of run by a hippie out of San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, right. That you is really that. amazing. You know what I mean? Right. Like, it's so weird. <laughs> oh, fuck, man. What does is, what is Moonflower say I should do about that? I mean, conference? honestly, like, of all the, th the, the fact that that is in the yeah. atmosphere around him is unbelievable. So strange. 
Uh, Ronald Nancy Wright memoirs. She writes that wearing clothes from designers was good for the fashion industry. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, right. It was a job creator. But yeah. the author of the Ethics and Government Act says, quote, that's not a legal defense. That's a public relations defense. You are dealing with elected officials who are controlled by a series of laws and rules that bar or limit the kinds of things they can receive from outsiders. It then comes out that Nancy's hairdresser was paid for by Clairol, costing the company more than $100,000, also blatantly illegal. And her personal manicurist flew in weekly from L.A. to do her nails, which she also did Jesus not pay Christ. for. Her. There were no fucking manicurists in D.C. Well, yeah, she's just honestly. a fucking asshole. Yeah, she well, no, sucks. the astrologer she... said she had to use one on a flight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She needed fucking barbs to do her yeah, nails. Yeah. The IRS opens an investigation. Oh, By wow. 1992, the IRS d- determined the Reagans failed to include $3 million worth of clothing on their tax returns, and they wow. pay a large amount of back taxes. Oh, wow. I All did right, not good. know about that. But that's easy because someone bought them a house. So right, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. right. They, they, that's, that's little. In 1989, Ronald is thrown from a horse. Six weeks later, a CT scan reveals a traumatic brain injury. They drill a hole in his skull to drain two blood clots. Jesus. He takes... Two million in speaking fees for a gig in Japan, and people think he's cashing in on the presidency. You remember that when you would? I know. That's remember amazing. Remember when that was that thing that people that that was a scandal. Upon. Yeah, and now it's just that's part. People, yeah, it's people run for the pre, people run for president knowing they're not going to get the nomination just so they can get speaking get rich. Gigs. That's right. right. Yeah, that's right. That's all it is now. It's well, so and it's just a I, career move. T- potentially the man in charge of the country right now well, yeah, was yeah, also yeah. on that path. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I think after Obama left office, I think the first g- spe- he gave a speech to Goldman yeah, Sachs for five hundred thousand. People oh. were furious, as yeah. they should be. It's fucked yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. In 1989, Ronald. Oh, sorry. Uh, John Poindexter is convicted of five charges and sentenced to six months. It's overturned on appeal. Oliver North is convicted of three charges, overturned on appeal. President Bush pardons everyone as the investigation hones in on him. Of course. And just before he leaves office in 1992. That ends the Iran-Contra investigation, keeps himself out of jail, keeps Reagan out of jail. He pardons Elliot Abrams, who now works for Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. Sure does. And McFarlane, who became an advisor on John McCain's campaign. These guys wow. never go away. No. There is no such thing as doing something that gets your career done. Well, they never fucking go away. I mean, away. Henry Kissinger is a great example. That dude now looks like a SpongeBob character, and he is still being like wheeled around like blinking skin yeah. that's just like, yeah. 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 No, everyone that, <laughs> that uh, pushed for the Iraq war all have jobs, yeah, all no. doing great. No, and they keep, yeah. Ed, Ed Meese was convicted of shit, and he ended up opening up the Heritage Foundation with the Oh, Cokes. wow. Exactly. Like, he he's Never he's the away. reason that we have Obamacare. Right, like his yeah, yeah. Heritage Foundation came up with that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's all great. Um, <laughs> the pardons were, uh, were all done under the advice and recommendation of Bush's Attorney General William Barr, mm. yeah, who currently serves as Trump's Attorney General. Doing Still a, crushing it, by doing the way. A great job. Still crushing it. Doing a great job. Reagan and Bush were never charged for their crimes of treason. For an added bonus. I don't have time to go into this, but the disgraced EPA chief who refused to turn over Superfund files to Congress and was removed, her son, Neil Gorsuch, placed on the Supreme Court by Donald Trump. Hell yeah. Yeah. (sighs) It just goes to show how much Trump is not different at all. Oh, yeah, I know. There's nothing new. Yeah. Kitty Kelly published her tell-all book and brutal book about Nancy Reagan in 1991. And includes the rape allegation that we talked about earlier. People magazine interviewed Celine Walters and she confirmed it, but not the phrase date rape that Kitty had used. Quote, I didn't want him to make love to me. He's a very big man and he just had his way. Date rape? No. God, no. That's Kelly's phrase. I didn't have a chance to have a date with him. Oh. The Reagans do not comment. By the end of Re- Ronald Reagan's presidency, 138 administrative officials had been convicted, indicted, Uh, or been the subject of investigations for official misconduct and or criminal violations. In terms of number of officials involved, the record of this administration was the worst ever. In 1994, Ronald was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. On July 5th, 2004, at 93, he died at his home, surrounded by his family. Earlier this year, Steve Bannon resurrected Human Events Magazine with some other Trumpers. Oh, boy. In Obama's second State of the Union address, he proposed a freeze in discretionary spending and federal salaries pushed to simplify the tax code and billions of cuts to the defense budget. He made new calls for a bipartisan effort to repair Social Security. These were all Reagan's positions. 
Time Magazine quote, Obama signed a surprise $858 billion tax cut that would have made Reagan reap with joy. <sighs> and then also, uh, wow. to me, the worst thing Hillary did on the campaign trail was say that Ronald Reagan did a lot for AIDS research. Oh, that's a crazy... I, I remember that. I, I, that, I remember that. That. that really is such a like crazy the, the, thing. The, the Democratic Party has been infected. Instead of rejecting everything he is, they've sort of absorbed Assimilated, it. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, no, there's a Time Magazine it. cover where it's Obama and Reagan arm in arm, and it's like, Obama loves Reagan. Like there is, there, I think, and probably because of that bulletproof appeal that you're talking about, where it's like you can't really get to the essence of why we supported him right. so blindly. Yet well, but he that's, is. That's what they remember, and they, that's their fantasy of you have a figure in there where we can get all of our horrifying shit through because people yeah. love him so a much. A great vehicle. That if you criticize him, we can send you to the cornfield. Yeah. Right. You know, and so they want that again. I think both parties want that again. Yeah, of course. You know, um, of and, course. But the fact that like. They idolize Reagan, but they also are like he could have gone way farther. With oh this yeah, stuff. and that's what we're seeing now. That's yeah, what we're seeing and the now. stuff, and we're gonna see something worse down the line. That's right. And when our the Democratic Party has moved to the right, where Reagan was, yeah. the right has gone off the cliff. To that's right. Somewhere that we yeah. don't even know. Anymore. But but the but the off the cliff right is gonna find a. 43 year old super fit super smart charismatic guy oh yeah but doing better all puppet. Trump's, yeah exactly better puppet. who's puppet. Yeah. who's actually uh good at good at what he wants who doesn't to do. tweet yeah i mean he just be, doesn't tweet if you, you know? if you have if you have an evil obama <laughs> yeah you know what i mean if you yeah. i mean obama did fucked up shit with drones and yeah, yeah. immigration stuff but if you have that sort of competence with oh boy uh trump you know you have what you have also this shit because like, every time people go off about Trump, I just keep there's this feeling in me like we, I already lived this. Right. We lived this through Reagan. Yeah, like, right. have, aside from the tweeting and stuff, it's all the fucking same. Ex the one thing that is different is we have not, we did not live it this blatantly. And to, you know, you you when you went through that timeline, there were this thing would happen, and then we'd have some. Uh, few months of normalcy and live our lives yeah this is every oh, yeah. other is hour some yeah. crazy and so there's yeah. no way to even yeah. form a thought anymore no. it's true, true. yeah, yeah. yeah. So. It's, drunk. it's relentless yeah, yeah. yeah. it's yeah. it's yeah. like reagan on like uh meth yeah um it's crazy great killer mike song reagan <laughs> oh it's the best yeah, 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 yeah. i love that song well i'm sorry thanks for tuning in guys <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're all doomed <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Oh, what? I'm sorry. I can't hear. Oh, Mr. Peppers, he's not. He's not feeling well today. So, thank you, Patton, so much. Yeah, man. Thanks for doing this. And thank thanks you, everybody, for, for listening to 400 episodes. Yeah, I can't so. wait for the 800. It'll <laughs> <laughs> <From> be Obama. It'll <laughs> <laughs> be about how great Trump is. Uh, oh, boy. All right. <laughs> well, happy trails. Off happy we go. Trails. Fuck. Yeah, that's thank depressing. You, wait, I cannot.